Hello everybody, Toastbomb here. Today we're going to be talking about something that I personally have to be working on quite a bit because I've noticed that I've been slacking on this quite a bit lately, and that is keeping your options open in a fight. Now this is very important because not only does it keep your opportunities for the battle open all the time because you can go behind that piece of cover, you can go this way, you can do this, you can do that. You have all these options so whatever ends up happening to you, you can react to it properly and get back on top of the fight. It also keeps your enemy guessing. If you've ever been fighting someone in a really bad position, you, real you realize, oh crap. That guy can do this, he can do this, he's basically in full control of the fight and how it ends up and how it plays out, and this kind of sucks. So you don't want to be in that position, you want to be in the opposite side, you want to have as many options as possible and make the enemy feel like they have no control over the fight. You want to be controlling everything. Now one of the things that people do a lot, and this is really bad, is jumping. Because jumping sets you on a almost exact trajectory making you much easier to shoot and not only is it easier f for you to be shot at it also loses all your options because you can't go behind that piece of cover you can't move left you can't move right you can't do anything but fly through the air in a set path so that is really bad in a lot of situations it's not always the wrong choice there is areas where jumping actually is the correct choice but in general it's better for you to not jump because it's such a common thing that people do all the time in almost every single fight they jump and I've been doing it recently as well and I, I need to catch myself and stop doing it because it takes away everything that you can do. Now another thing that people do a lot to take away their options is grenades, those last second ditch effort grenades. Now these grenades to try and get that kill at the last second are maybe a little more acceptable in FFAs because if you die and that other person gets cleaned up it's not a point for your team, it's a point for some other dude, but they're still probably not so great and this is why. When you're getting shot and you do those panic grenades, or at least a lot of people do, it's usually when you're one shot or sometimes even before you're one shot, you're trying to anticipate your death and you're panicking. You're like, oh God, I gotta get this grenade out. I gotta try and kill the guy. But as you know, when you're shooting somebody, you're not always perfect. When you get down them down to one shot, you don't always hit them. You might even miss. You might hit them in the body a couple times. It could take two, three, maybe even in some cases four or more shots to kill them. And that entire time when that enemy is trying to knock you in the head, you could have been shooting them and putting more damage on, meaning that you could even you could have put a bunch of damage on to get them one shot, and then if it's a team game, your team could have cleaned them up, or you could have even won the fight. But if you throw a grenade, all you're doing is sitting there with your arm out, throwing some watermelon at somebody, and then they end up wiping you off the face of the planet. So that lowers your options a lot as well throwing grenades, but let's look at how to keep your options open. So first of all, we already went over staying on the ground, keep your options open because you can actually have mobility, but another thing is staying near a wall, staying near a, something you can jump off of, staying near a piece of cover, because if you have any of those things, you can duck down, go behind them, jump up on top of them, any of that stuff, and it's really, really useful. Best thing is probably the cover, because if you need to, you can back out, go behind the cover, come back out, pop out the same side, go anywhere, jump up on top of the cover, anything. Keeps you having a lot of different ways that you could take the fight in what, whatever is necessary. So when you're walking around the map to try and fight in enemies, you're going from place to place, keep that in mind because a battle could happen at any moment. Someone could pop out. So try your best to instead of say, okay, I'm going to go from this part of the map and go to this part of the map and try to critical line, get there as quick as possible, and more say, okay, I want to get to this part of the map eventually, but what I'm going to do is sort of jump from piece of cover to piece of cover so that... If a battle does happen, I'm at least close enough to a piece of cover that I can utilize that piece of cover. And that can be even as simple as Haven, where you look at those curvy hallways, or what they call the streets, even the upper street or the bottom street. And you could run around that inner part of the circle and cut off just a few little milliseconds or what you could do is you could jump from pillar to pillar or if you're at the bottom part you could 
again, sort of jump from pillar, those blocks that are on the ground. You could jump from them to them. And then also a really great place to be is where there's the drop down. You can use that indentation in the wall and use that corner, that piece of cover there. There's a lot of different little spaces that you could use in a fight if something does happen. And if you're close to that stuff, you can use it. And then one last thing that's really awesome that is something that not many people do, and again, this is something that I should probably do a little bit more of, is crouching in the middle of your strafe. Because, like I said, you can crouch now while you're moving. And people did do this in the older games where they would stop moving for a really short amount of time. Like, right when they stopped moving, then they would crouch and keep going. But since Halo 1, where the crouch animation was really dramatic and you moved up and down a lot really fast, it hasn't been as useful of a thing to have in your game, but it, it was still used some. But in Halo 4, it is actually pretty useful. So while you're strafing back and forth, assuming you're using more of a classic set of controls, it might be a little more awkward if you're on the new style of controls where I think B is crouch and it's not clicking the stick. might be a little more awkward, but you could still potentially do it by like clawing or something like that, so you could still aim. But that is also another great trick to introduce and another option you can have while you're battling. So there you have it, some things to think about when you're going into your next match. When you're running around the map, make sure you stay near cover, keep your options open, available, and have a lot of them. Utilize that cover too, don't just stand next to it, you can use that, it's awesome stuff, you should totally do that. But some stuff to think about, keep your options open, don't jump maybe as much as you might, and... There you have it. So, anyways, that is it for this one. If you liked it, you can leave a like or a comment, or you could subscribe because I post new Halo videos every day. Anyways, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.